Welcome everyone to episode 11 of whatever the fuck this is. As you can see, I am alone today. There is no nobody being interviewed, nobody here to talk to but me. Uh, that is because I want to just dedicate this episode to look back on the past 10 episodes. Just a little bit for the first part, you know, to kind of see what we've learned for the past 10 episodes and see how this has advanced, where this podcast is going, all of that. Um, because I know I had these questions at the beginning and some of you have uh, asked me before, you know, like, hey, what is your show really about? And I still cannot really answer it um, other than like, you know, conversations about life, conversations about life that I need, I think a lot of people need to have. But, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to answer some of the questions and some of the things that you guys asked me to like answer a while ago on uh, on an Instagram poll. And then lastly, I'm going to end up with only one other topic that I've been meaning to talk about for a while. It's pretty interesting and I think it will be interesting. It's pretty weird, honestly, but I think you guys will like it. But yeah, uh, today I just wanted to let you know that, you know, on the 11th episode of whatever the fuck this is, we're celebrating 10 good episodes. So we're drinking a special drink today. Wow, this actually looks very nice in the light. Uh, it is the Crystal Head Vodka. It's super good. Um, you know, it's very expensive. I think I had this for like a year and a bit already. I drink very little of it, but, you know, in honor of such an episode, I'll drink it neat. This is like craft vodka. This is good vodka. Um, I'm not a big drinker, to be honest. I'm not a huge drinker. In college, maybe I used to drink a little bit more just on the weekends and stuff. But since I've finished, I've kind of like stopped drinking as much. But, you know, for, for an occasion like this, I can pour, you know, a finger of vodka for whatever the fuck this is. So before I start... You know, cheers to 10 episodes and thank you for being here. It's delicious. All right, so let's get the show started. The first thing that I wanted to talk about today is what the 10 episodes that I've already released have kind of gotten into, you know. Um, so to give you a small review we started on episode one and two with my girlfriend you know so episode one two four you know uh seven and eight were with her and usually with my girlfriend with margaret we go into topics from you know relationship our day-to-day life our struggles as uh, freelancers as designers as writers you know in the world of advertising we go into topics that you know most of our friends can uh, relate to and we also explore some, you know, some some questions about society, about culture. It, they're really interesting. Episode one, um, and we talked about immigration, about forming better habits. Uh, it was very interesting. You know, we got episode two with her again, and then we got a, we went a bit over into her life. Episode three was really interesting. It was with uh, Maria Matskevich and. We talked about open borders and like the fear of change and immigration and stuff. And, you know, now on episode five, we had uh, Mohsin Corbry. He was a, an MMA fighter. He is an MMA fighter, you know, multiple champion of the world in boxing and in MMA, um, judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Episode six, we filmed from the woods. If you guys want to see that, we actually filmed in the middle of the woods in Ohio. And we filmed it with our friends that are traveling, Chad and Claire. And uh, that was a really interesting episode because I feel like we went into so many details that you usually wouldn't go into in a normal conversation in a room. So, you know, we were out in the middle of nowhere with a bonfire. It's an awesome episode. It's one of my favorites. So you should definitely give it a, a listen. Seven and eight again were with my girlfriend and then episode nine. Uh, we talked with Mark Feliu, a producer, uh, a musician, and a startup founder. You know, the startup that we're working on right now, Museamp, he he leads it. You know, he started this project where we we're helping musicians and artists around the world uh, grow their social media presence and their music. 
we're kind of offering mentorship to those artists and that episode goes more into that so if you're interested in that you should also check that out and then finally episode 10 was with uh, Rami Barrio Nuevo Ramiro and that was the episode where I decided that this podcast was going to take a different route and not only did I not have a solid category to place my podcast but until episode 10 at least my show was only in English well in order to piss more people off and to piss off the algorithm and to make sure that none of my videos are ever going to get watched, I made episode 10 in fucking Spanish because I think that some of the conversations that I can have with people in their native tongues that I also happen to know are much more engaging than trying to um, translate everything to English, you know? And don't get me wrong, English, you know, more people understand it, but I feel like I'd rather lose the fact that you know some people that don't speak spanish are not going to listen to it and gain the fact that you know spanish speaking people will enjoy um listening to an insightful video and that's what this was episode 10 was awesome it was you know rami is a coach and uh we went he's from argentina and he's also living in the united states so we just went over the what being a coach is you know what um, coaching versus psychology um you know we talked about social media manipulation you know we went into a lot of different topics that were really interesting and it was in Spanish. And I don't think the same result would have been achieved with him in, in English. Not that he speaks uh, less English than Spanish, but, you know, you can kind of flow in a language other than your um, than your own, you know. And um, I think that's the reason why we did Spanish with him. For me, it's similar. I feel like in English I can speak a lot better than Spanish and, and Romanian right now. And English is like my third language, so... I don't know. The world is weird. So yeah, those were the 10 first episodes. Uh, that's a bad and a short um, review and a short summary of them. But I wanted to like kind of let you guys know. I want to be super transparent on how the show is doing. You know, I'm not expecting the hugest numbers. Um, I'm not expecting this to go viral anytime soon or anytime. I'm just doing this to, one, build a community around being curious and being open to learning about new things in the world and two because I really believe that I can um, put myself out there and my beliefs and my creativity and my creations in a way that can also help other people you know so as everything it has a benefit to the community but it also has like this selfish benefit you know I, I am trying to learn how to have better conversations with people I am trying to learn more about the world and I feel like I enjoy these conversations and I'm going to keep having them, but I'm going to be super authentic with you with the numbers that we've gotten so far. So first of all, on YouTube, um, the total videos, video watches, including the long episodes and the uh, short little clips were 796 and we started like in September. So it's been like two months. We had 796 views. Uh, which is, you know, not a lot, but it's not little either for, you know, some episodes that had over one hour plus. Um, for those long episodes, like those long episodes that we played for like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, um, you know, we had over six minutes and a half of average watch on some of them. And some of other ones we had over 10 minutes. Other ones, you know, were lower two, three minutes. But, you know, we averaged like over 10, 15 percent of um, total videos watched. So like. If, uh, say, the, the video was 100 minutes, most people would listen to about 15 to 20 minutes. And counting on how many people watch 20 minutes of me talking shit into a microphone, you know, that's a lot. It's just a kid in Chicago talking shit. So I'm really thankful for them. And, you know, in only two months, we've ranked, racked up 49 hours total of watch time. So 49 hours were dedicated to just, you know, watching um, these videos and learning and hopefully taking, you know, inspiration from what we were talking about. So that's pretty awesome. And then on the other platforms like Spotify, iTunes, uh, I mean, Apple Podcasts, Amazon and all that, um, we were even on a podcast platform in, in India. I think it's called Geosav. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm getting some listens over there as well. It's, it's cool to have a very multicultural um, audience. So shout out to my people from India. Like, you guys are awesome. It's crazy how this podcast is getting to places that I never know, I never knew it could get. So I hope it keeps on spreading. You know, I want to get listeners from all around the world 
you know, have it be a multilingual podcast. You know, it's going to be a multilingual podcast from now on. So I, I don't, I don't, I, I love all the followers around the world. So yeah, we had 290 listens on the other platforms. Um, and I kind of entered in the, <clears throat> the analytics on Spotify and Apple and all that. And um, it's interesting to see the numbers, but none of them really meant much other than like, I could see that people listen, you know, the same kind of amounts, you know, in between six to 10 minutes for longer ones. Some people, we had a lot more li- like complete listens um, on uh, like Spotify and Apple podcasts than on YouTube, I guess, because YouTube, you know, people don't want to really watch it. You know, they just want to listen to it. So it's just interesting to see, but Hopefully, you know, in 10 more episodes when we do this check-in again or whenever we're going to do it, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm, I can be on the same trend as now, you know, slowly racking up hundreds of views, you know, hours, minutes, one day at a time. So thank you for everyone that's been hanging around so far, you know. Um, so I wanted to talk about a few things that I know might help people with their own podcast if, if you're starting. First of all, like there's not so many podcasts out there. Like considering the amount of, I, th- I think they're like, the last time I checked was 3,200,000 podcasts, which again, considering the amount of YouTube channels, considering the amount of other sorts of media out there, this is still in its baby steps. So yeah, you didn't start 10 years ago. I didn't start five years ago. You know, you can even start in a year and you might still be early to the game. But um, there's a few things that I've learned. You know, I'm definitely still a super beginner. Like I've not invested a lot of time yet into it like i'm still in the hundreds of hours you know not even thousands of hours um dedicated to this podcast um i just think i I hit like 100 the other day so i I, it's not a lot that i've dedicated to it yet but i've learned some things and i want to share them with you so the production of the podcast in terms of like progression i feel like i started very basic and i'm still pretty basic i'm using an imac webcam like uh the the internal camera and I'm not really ashamed of it you know I'm trying to get a better camera but I'm just I didn't want to let this kind of stuff get in the way of me creating content and I don't think you should let it either you know people get really hung up on god I need like this good camera a tripod I need a Canon I need uh, this kind of lighting and filters no you, you need like a phone and you need some sort of microphone to attach and not even that you can just talk into your phone but I wanted to give a nicer experience, so I bought a, a microphone, and that was like a, an investment, you know. And off the bat, I tried keeping it to one episode per week, so it usually takes me about 10 hours every week to work on this podcast with all the editing. Sometimes I outsource it, so it drops to like maybe five, seven hours, but I've had weeks where it was 12 hours a week. And, you know, considering that I was working as well an agency job, which was 40 hours a week plus freelancing, you know, it, it one episode, if you really want to make it work, I feel like 10 hours every week, you could probably do two episodes in that, you know, as you start getting faster, but it takes some time, you know, it depends on how I set up the clips and everything, but it takes a while to create it, but not as much as I thought, honestly, one episode a week is doable. Um, You can always find people to talk to and you just have to make, you just have to prepare a little bit and show up. Um, I found that it's been a great way of socializing this podcast has really helped me overcome the fact that i haven't been able to socialize with people in a, in a bar in um i don't know on the on in a park at an arcade i don't know it's i love meeting new people and this is one of the reasons why i moved to chicago and it's kind it kind of sucks you know because right now the whole world is undergoing like big bans and changes and restrictions so you know social life has drastically changed and I don't want to be too like sad about it but honestly like it kind of sucks like it's not what it used to be and it's never gonna be what it used to be so I've used this like podcasting as a way to keep up with friends and also start conversations with strangers you know so it's been a very nice experience for me socializing with people over zoom and, and having these conversations that I'd usually have over a drink or you know at home over dinner it's very nice to have these conversations, these life um, questioning conversations, even at distance. So I'm really thankful for those people that set out an hour out of their time to to come and talk to me. And yeah, I found it like it's a great way of socializing. So if you want to start a podcast, just like, I don't know, start like hanging out with old friends and, and call each other, you know, like a reunion of friends. Do something like that. Um, another thing I learned is that I had the opportunity to talk to so many people of different backgrounds and I didn't learn that I, I aimed for that so I it's almost like a goal met 
like these 10 episodes have made me research so many different kind of cultures ideologies you know i've learned a lot about the the black activism i learned a lot about coaching i've learned about borders um i don't know i don't want to like not mention anything but i learned many different things and i've learned different notions and then you know i went further into it and researched you know and i'm a very curious person that that wants to know more about stuff so that this has been awesome i've learned about so many different things and i st still have a pretty nice lineup of, of people that know their shit coming up for um you know this show or whatever this is gonna become um next thing is i got to used to talking to people even through a screen this was a weird one for me i got didn't get so much interaction with the screen uh at my workplace usually you didn't have to put your camera on so interacting with somebody over the video was ve very weird at me at first for me at first because i couldn't tell the body language and if i cannot discern the body, la body language of somebody i'm gonna have a hard time being able to direct the conversation so over video i've learned different body cues you know and i've learned to analyze the conversation and see how it goes and ask the correct questions and i still got a lot to learn but i feel like like you know 10 episodes later i definitely know it better than i did so that's cool brought up uh, the fact i already brought up the fact that i got to talk to old friends you know i haven't talked to them in like eight years and i just love it you know i love the whole dynamic of creating a podcast and you gotta love it this is another thing that i that you gotta know in podcasting like you gotta know that you're gonna have to do a lot of things at the same time you're gonna gain so many skills from starting a podcast that starting a podcast in itself should be like count it as a course you know like you gotta learn how to like light it up like use light sound and you know i'm still learning and i'm outsourcing but you know how to use the script where to host it an rss feed youtube editing you gotta be able to export stuff you gotta have a good computer you gotta have a good camera you gotta learn like your topic about the person you gotta know how to like create a, a podcast over distance there's many things that come into play when it you got to start producing your own podcast. So you're going to learn so much. And I feel like it's very valuable, especially today in a world where, you know, we need many skills. You don't just need one. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that too. Analytics. Wow. I just, so for the first month, I didn't really go into analytics because like I said, I liked adding one layer of improvement to the podcast every week slowly. So every week I did something better. I improved something or added something that uh, you know, I felt like the podcast needed. So you can kind of see that progression if you watch the episodes. And now I'm really getting into analytics and trying to see on each platform what's working and what's not. And I learned, for example, on Spotify, people that were like between 30 and 45 were listening mainly. And in India, people that were like 50 to 60 were listening to my stuff. So it's like, it's very weird to like know what kind of audiences listen to you, but you got to know that, you know, you, you have to know the numbers. And I've been looking at YouTube and learning how to like deal with analytics so that's another skill that you got to learn and it's pretty cool and lastly like i said it's a bilingual podcast the last episode was in spanish so i was like fuck it it's gonna be a bilingual podcast for now trilingual you know i know romanian it can be uh you know don't even get me started if i bring my sister in she knows like five languages so it's gonna be awesome so those are like kind of my thoughts about the past 10 episodes you know it's been nice it's been uh, a uh, it's been a pleasure and i definitely want to continue now I feel like with whatever the fuck this is, the podcast in itself is becoming a, the journey of discovering maybe myself and maybe what I like doing and maybe what my next podcast should be. I definitely feel like this is highly experimental. So like I said, I know that I don't have a defined target audience. I'm just hoping to get people from all sorts of backgrounds to talk about stuff that maybe they haven't talked about before. So with that in mind, later on, I might start either another show or stop this and start something more focused but i would always like to keep this format where we can i want to just sit down with somebody and have a talk about life you know so i think whatever the fuck this is might continue on for a long time or i don't know but this is what my plans are i want to continue doing whatever the fuck this is and then eventually open up some other branch um some other show that goes more in depth about some other topic which i'm brewing but i won't say more today so uh, this is, these are the kind of plans that I have for now, but you never know what can happen because life's fucking crazy lately. And so is 2020. 2021 is just going to get crazier, but in a better way. Um, right. So I think that this is the 
time for the first break. Um, I'm gonna leave you with the sound of some nice Japanese jazz. I'm gonna hate myself later for doing this because I'm gonna have to download the clip, put it in, edit it out. But hey, anything for you guys. So enjoy this 10 15 seconds of some nice Japanese jazz by Suzuki. <laughs> And we're back. Um, the next call, the, the next segment that I wanted to do was pretty interesting. This was something that I asked people on Instagram um, like a month and a half ago. I was like, hey, guys, can you please tell me what you would like me to talk about or ask me anything, you know, give my opinion on anything. So I think that I'm due for a, a few answers. You know, I hope people that ask the question are still patient and remember that it was their question. All right, let's start with the first one. So making it post-college app reviews and hobbies okay so i'm gonna talk about the first one because i think it's important which is making it post-college i had a job i'm saying i had because i just finished but i had a job um with the agency in with an agency in um, chicago so i had something planned before the pandemic hit and before i graduated but it wasn't 100 certain that i wanted to do that i had to take the opportunity because of the circumstances but I feel like I was very lucky um, I cannot speak to making it post college in these new days because I'd be lying I don't know what hap- what's happening with the world but I would say starting early was the one thing that gave me an advantage like I had done an internship with this company already so it was like they already knew me they knew I was reliable um, but yeah so making it after college so once we graduated I stayed for three months at my girlfriend's house in Charleston with her parents and they were very nice to host me and her and I even filmed some of this the previous podcast over there it was awesome but at the same time you know it was like right after college I, we already wanted to move and you know be in our own place sadly we couldn't do that and we you know we were treated incredibly you know their parents cooked this food and stuff but I feel like I was lucky enough to have that safety and I know a lot of people went home as well after home, we moved to Chicago. I started working again, like from home, uh, with this agency. And honestly, like it's been awesome until now. But making it post college right now is gonna seem very different. I feel like a lot of people should think about it in a different way. I feel like you shouldn't start looking for jobs. Start looking for what really makes you happy. I feel like mixing what makes you happy and making money can happen. As long as you're not working for someone else. Or, or maybe it works for you. Like, what I'm saying is try and see. Maybe a job is not what you need. Maybe it is. So just think about the different options that you have. It might be freelancing. It might be working for yourself. It might be starting something. I know not everybody is, like, do, like able to do it. But think about it. If you go with the flow right now, you're bound to... To be caught up in the system right like if you just continue graduating looking for a job it's predictable those things might not be around those things are bound to change especially with covid so you got to think about it in a different way tackle it from a different way hey um you don't need to be in a fucking workplace all the time to make money think about if you had a job or if you work from home or if you've freelanced think about how much money you've made from home you know And that's not to say that we still don't need other people that work physically, like run shops and boutiques and supermarkets and and hair cutters and doctors and firemen and police. There's a lot of people that still got to go to work. But if you're studying for something that you might not need to go to work for, think about going the different route. There's many ways you can make money online and you can live a happier life. Uh, And I know making money online sounds like a scam. I mean, like working remotely and, you know, living a happy life. So making it post-college is a stress. Give yourself some time. Don't feel guilty to use those safety nets like your parents, your family, if you have them. And if you don't have them, know that the whole world is kind of in shambles. So now is your chance. Now when there's the most uncertainty and crisis, this is where anyone can break through. This is a time where the underdogs, this is a time where the minorities are thriving. So you should probably catch on the wave. So give it a try, you know, try something else other than a regular. And I know that might piss people off, your parents. 
I'm not telling you it's the right decision. I'm saying give it a go. All right, next thing, your thoughts on sustainability. The sustainability has become such a big part of design even, like designing for sustainability, having packaging that can, this packaging that you can like plant and seeds will grow, like you have seeds that will grow out of that packaging into plants in your home and um, you can have packaging that's edible, packaging that's dissolvable in water. Um, You have vertical farms that you can basically like start farming up so you don't use so much space. You can literally have a house and grow enough plants to supply your local neighborhood. Like I feel like many people think of sustainability as giving up certain commodities because it's like, oh, I cannot use the fossil fuels. I cannot use the normal electricity. But I feel like there's a lot of benefits that come with sustainability that include the freedom to do more things. Sustainability is nothing but using or harnessing nature's powers in a smarter way. You know, why make packaging that stops it being a packaging? Why not make it a plant? You prolong, you give it a longer life. You know, giving a product a longer life, um, a longer useful life, not a life where it's, you know, plastic and it's waste. It makes sure that one resource is used for so long and it's so beneficial that we don't need to go and look for more. And that kind of self-sufficiency within nature and being resourceful and harnessing the, the, the powers of nature, like Nikola Tesla said, I think that's very important. And it's not just about having electric cars and stuff. It's more about using nature in a smart way. And I feel like if we continue on the because I know that solar panels and certain things are not as sustainable as you think and you should like look it up. So I'm thinking we're going towards a better route and I'm really a fan of sustainability. Now, I'm sure that I'm unaware of different ways that I'm fucking it up. Like I'm, I, I hear that, you know, eating um, certain meats and stuff is unsustainable. It's hard to know what to believe, but I feel like you, if you're going to believe something, just choose to believe in it and do the best that you can to help people. If you think that sustainability genuinely can help people, then you should probably like continue doing it and you know helping out that's my thoughts on sustainability um condensed for you all right next how digital marketing is adding value to business um so that's my job (laughs) i could use this i could totally use this for a mini clip and like sell you my services and tell you all this shit but i can honestly tell you that i'm gonna have people that are gonna be talking about this in more in depth and i'm gonna have them walk you through like there's a few people from the industry from advertising and marketing that are going to be on the show and they're going to be able to talk more about it but from my point of view you need you need to dominate all digital channels as a marketer you need to know everything as a brand and you need to have your content all over the place simple as that more on another episode um The next one is the misconception of heroes and their invincibility. I think I wrote something nice about this. Yeah. So we talked about the the story of the hero with Rami in the last uh, episode, in episode 10 in Spanish. But you should definitely reach out to him and uh, you can have his tag in the video. But you should reach out to him to talk about the history of the hero story and the, you know, your own hero story every one of us has a hero story um it is very interesting i don't know i don't know if a hero is always the kind of person that is invincible i feel like i had something written oh there we go i think like a hero finds a way to continue fighting until they're defeated they're not invincible they don't give up and they sometimes are beat it, like beaten up. It's just that you don't see that in the movie. Um, in our real life, stories aren't as short as a movie. You know, it's not as simple. So your hero story towards the end will have a an, an end, and every hero has a, has an end. You know, even if they're like omnipotent, if they're you know they live forever, they still have a sort of an end. The hero is not invincible so much as the hero is able to keep on going despite the obstacles that he faces. A hero is able to incorporate the wisdom that the, you know, the sage or the whatever you want to call that character, 
the smart person gives him, you know, somebody older with more experience comes and gives him information. Think about it. You have professors, you have teachers, you have parents, you have many of those characters in your life. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying the history, I mean, the story of the hero. Um, it's not that every per- it's not that you should feel invincible or be invincible because you should be the hero of your own story. But I feel like you should be relentless. And I might be wrong and Rami might have something else to say, but those are my opinions on it. Um, eating ass. <laughs> all right, do it. That's all I can say. Somebody asked me this. Veganism. Uh, I used to be very like, against it but i used to be against a lot of things when i had like a super close mind i feel like you gotta talk to a nutritionist about it so don't quote me but i feel like it's very hard to get the same nutrients as you do with a more complete um diet especially veganism like you cannot eat anything that uh an animal produces so it's even harder than being just vegetarian to find the source of protein and Also, you know, diversify the source of protein because I know everyone's going to jump like, well, I know like five different things that have more protein than meat and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, okay, but you need a diverse diet for a healthy diet. So I feel like the people that really know what they're doing and they have doctors and they have, you know, they measure their blood and they can successfully substitute um, normal diet for a vegan diet. I mean, normal, I mean like a more varied diet then all the power because i've heard that as a vegan you feel like really light you feel like in a better mood um your digestive system works better you have more energy and i and i i I agree i've tried eating like um, almost only vegetarian and vegan for like a day or two fast and everything and you have like endless energy but after a while you seem to run out of it so i if you do it right i feel like it's okay just don't don't do it for bullshit reasons. I, I hate vegans that are doing it for the attention of it. That's it. If you're doing anything for the attention of it, fuck you. Um, what's the process that works? What's the process in finding what works for you and the struggles to get there? You keep trying. You keep trying stuff and you fail and you keep trying and you continue and you see whatever you like. Not whatever you succeed at because you can also see, succeed off the bat in anything. Unless you're super talented or something. But you try your hand at everything and see what you like. And what you say, hmm, I like doing this for longer. Ask me. I've been a tennis player for 13 years. I have 200 skydives, 30, di- 30 scuba dives. I've ran marathons. I've uh, competed in mountain biking. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying the amount of stuff that I tried to find the one thing that I like. And I was lucky to do all these things, you know. Studied advertising. I've done video editing. I've done. I've, I've designed apparel. I've designed this hoodie that I'm wearing right now. I've done so many things, and and thank God I had the opportunity to because I found out a lot of things that I liked and a lot of things that I didn't like. If you don't have the time or the financial opportunity to do it, then I feel like that's another conversation. But. I do believe that trying the most things in your life within your capability will show you what you truly like. And also not getting attached to the idea that there is one thing that works for you. Maybe there is uh, many things that work for you. Or maybe there is not one thing that works perfectly, but there's a lot of things that work kind of good. And all of those together form something extraordinary. I don't know. Something to think about. Next thing. Real life shit. And then Spanish laughing with a J. Ja, 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 ja. Just making fun. I know exactly who wrote this too. Uh, someone said real life shit. All right, you want to talk about real life shit? The shiny side of the aluminum foil keeps the heat in better than the less shiny side of the aluminum foil. And as long as I'm concerned, this is enough quality content to be an adult. So that's the real life shit that you're going to get today. More about what passions you. Um... It's a very hard question to say. What passions me is definitely sharing and sharing conversations and sharing culture with other people. I love finding new things and learning new things. And if you think about it, it's not just to keep it for me, but is to share with the people. And, I, and you know, copy one of my coaches has 
taught me this throughout my life that the only reason that we learn and the only reason that we do stuff is to share with others. So that's an interesting point. All these conversations that I have, all these things that I want to learn about, they're made so I can talk about them with other people and share them with other people. Nothing that you do is just for yourself. Everything that you learn, you're essentially going to give back in some way. So that's what passions me. Making sure that if I learn the correct stuff that helps the society and helps me become a better person, then I'm going to output that into the world myself. So like Michael Jackson said, you know, if you work on yourself, like in the man in the mirror, I'm looking at the man in the mirror, I'm starting with me. And then, you know, going on to the world. I hope it's not too cheesy. It's just the truth. Um, yeah, those are the questions that I received. And now we're going to go on to segment number three. But before that, a little bit more Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> we're back and I have to get a sip of that before I go into this topic now for this third and final topic I wanted to mention something before if you're um, not aware of this I like finding random shit on the internet and then talking about it and I might incorporate this later on but this is not so random it's not something that's that underground but it's called cryonics So cryonics is the low temperature freezing and storage of a human corpse or severed head with the speculative hope that resurrection may be possible in the future. (laughs) So basically, before you die, you sign a contract and you pay $200,000 to a certain company which I think was named Alcor. And whenever... 200000 for a whole body, and I think it was like seventy five grand for just the head. Like, they preserve just the head and later on, like, attach it to another body. So for $200,000, you can make sure that once you're dead, you're not going to be dead. You'll be preserved. And one day, hopefully, or not, technology will bring you back to life. So before I go into how fucking bunkers that is, take a fucking second and think that this company has not been around for only 10 years. You think like, oh, you know, someone's got the idea recently. No, this company has been around for over 100 years, if I'm not wrong. Anyways, it's been around for a while. There's been like famous people that have um, used it. Like there's a baseball player whose head they've stored. They've even said that they've like stored Walt Disney's head they say it's a myth. They'll never say it's real or not. Who knows? But they're holding so many... They're basically holding dead people like in a really super cold tank and preserving them frozen. And then hopefully in like a 100 years, I don't know when, if we're ever going to have that technology, they're going to be able to be brought back to life. Now, there's so much tension around this topic and people get so heated about it because... Of many reasons, obviously. One, people say that this is not possible. Like, number one, there's a lot of people that hold that it's not possible. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm not super informed about this. I'm just bringing like, hey, look this up, you know. I'm just telling you, look this up, learn for yourself. But this is what it is. People are saying that it's not possible to bring people back to life. Because the moment that you start on freezing them and warming them up, they'll almost instantly die because there'll be not enough composition not enough blood flowing through there'll be nothing to hold all the tissue together yet so that's one speculation um the other one is like the severed head who knows if if it wasn't like accidentally decapitated instead you know instead of carefully like cut um there's a lot of questions about that but my fucking question is dude have you seen the world imagine you were 100 years ago and you preserved your body and you're gonna let's say that we had fuck this technology in 2020. You died in 1920 and you were or in the 1920s in the roaring 20s and then technology in 2020 finds a way to bring you back to life. And then you're surrounded by these things. 
how the fuck do you think you're going how is that gonna look like is there gonna be a program where you're going to like first of all i'm saying hypothetically this works are you gonna bring people through like a program to get them used to the new world if so what do you tell them like how are you gonna make sure that this person is gonna become an integrated part of society and they're not gonna go fucking crazy and imagine if they're not if now imagine they're gonna be like brought back to life in 100 years how the fuck is life gonna look then so you know bravo to these people but holy shit no thank you i don't think i i don't think this is for me um they started like a hundred years ago and there's still a lot of tension about the ethics of it like there was a case where a certain person um in someone's will it was written that they wanted to be cremated but somebody had brought in a napkin where that person actually wrote that they wanted their body to be preserved and so his body was preserved i think it was um it was something lee i don't remember the name but you should look it up i'm sorry i'm I'm terrible at like giving names but this is the story and you should look it up cryonics look up cryonics um famous people that were preserved with cryonics and you find the list and one of those people was pretty much what sounds like frozen against their will so how fucked up is it that 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 person thought that they died and then they will be uh, tried and be brought back to life later on how is that going to how is that going to look like like they they didn't want to be frozen in first place and if it happened once and if it's going to become mainstream think about the amount of people that are going to be frozen against their will once you're dead you have no more power over your body Who's to keep anybody from freezing it, you know? Like, I feel like it's a, it's crazy. But honestly, if you ask me, I feel like there's more to life than just the body. I feel like life is everything but the body, you know, in a certain way. And I don't know how you're going to be able to bring that energy back, that spark, that soul. And is it going to be the same? Is it going to... I don't know. It's it's going to be weird. I don't know. Is your soul going to, is your soul going to be like, hang out in limbo? And then be brought back. Like, what is it going to look like? I'm just talking like crazy shit. But it's going to look very, very weird. And I have my concerns about it. But how cool is it? And they went... So I watched this video about it. And they went into Alcor, the company that does all this. And they were like tanks all over the place. And they're like, yeah, there's five people in here. Six people in here. And they fit them together. Like, all of them frozen. Like, in sacks and or heads. Sometimes you just have like severed heads and stuff. Like... Yeah, there's like 300 dead people and frozen in this room, like waiting to be brought back to life. And again, who's brought back to life first? Like, it's just all of these questions. What happens if they're brought back to life and they don't want to live anymore? Will you be able to like have assisted suicide by then? Will you be able to like just be killed? This reminds me of like Altered Carbon, really. I don't know if you watch Altered Carbon, if you didn't watch it on Netflix, it's pretty cool. The first season is anyways. And um, it's crazy. Like, the, they basically ha- have all of their memory stored in, like, this little chip. All their, like, personality and life and soul basically in this chip. And even if their body dies, that chip can be transferred to another body and they continue to live forever. Or they can choose to destroy their chip and die. I think, like, you know, people are going to have to deal with that kind of shit. Like, yeah, I don't want to continue living. Um, don't want to be put in a new body. Um, please let me die. That's crazy. But if you think about it, it's not very crazy because with Neuralink and everything, what is to say, I think Elon Musk said that we can essentially copy a whole entire neurological system and and paste it. So what's not to say that we could do that and download new thoughts into someone else's brain and, you know, instead of them having memories from the 1950s, they'll have brand new memories, you know? Like, we've watched it. Many movies do that. Marvel did that, like... I don't have to say them. I'm not referencing movies, but I'm just saying technology is already capable of doing that t- today. What if like we can start downloading? I, I, there's so many questions around why that I feel like it's scary. And it's also I'm also excited because, yeah, maybe playing God and trying to live forever. It's not the best thing to do, but if we can do it, it's still a human achievement. I just want to see how it's handled. So yeah, that was pretty much it. 
And that's pretty much it for me today, guys. I don't want to stay for too long. I know you've listened to this voice for a while. I want to keep this one maybe shorter. Maybe I get <laughs> more of you to listen till the end. Uh, but if you did, thank you very much. I want to let you know that this podcast will continue. I'll continue doing the one episode a week. Hopefully I can increment that soon. Um, I'm going to be talking to different people and stuff. And you know what? I hope you guys have incredible holidays. And I'll see you on the next episode of whatever the fuck this is. Thank you for listening. And peace. Peace.